What's up, everybody? Thank you for coming back to, actually, I rebranded this. This was Las Cruces Coffee Talk, and then I thought, wait a minute, we're trying to help small businesses. So I just literally changed it to Las Cruces Small Business Podcast. So welcome to the Las Cruces Small Business Podcast. Today, I have an awesome guest. She is a real estate agent, uh, but I'll let her get into more information, but I am talking to Miriam. Miriam, thank you so much for coming to Las Cruces Small Business Podcast. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you for having me, and thank you for doing this and creating this space for all of that uh, us. We really appreciate you. Oh, thanks. So if, if you could um, just kind of tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, uh, who you are, where you work, what's your, what's your business, what's your small business, um, and you know how long you've been in the industry, stuff like that. Okay, so I started in the industry back in 2012. Um, I didn't wanna be a realtor, that wasn't like my dream job at all. Uh, but it's just like kinda happened for me and I really, really like it, I really enjoy it. Um, so I was a real estate professional for a number of years. And then last year, um, I decided to open up my own brokerage and it has been challenging and it has been a huge learning experience in so many different ways, but I'm very happy I did it and I'm enjoying it a lot. I enjoy every single minute of the day. Awesome. So, so you, you, you started off, um, and so what, what, how did you become a real estate agent? Cause you, like you said, it wasn't, it wasn't a dream, but you fall in love with, with, with the profession, but how did you get started with a real estate business? So, um, before that I used to write, um, I, I was a published writer, right? And I really like it. I think that that's my passion in life. I've been writing since I was, I don't know, oh my gosh, like in third grade, uh, more of like creative writing or just writing like about my feelings, which I have a lot of feelings, <laughs> so I get to write a lot. Um, but really there wasn't a lot of money in that industry. And then I got married and I told my husband, you know what, uh, I just wanna be a mom. I never had the opportunity to just be a mom and he was a single dad and I had a little daughter. So I just thought that it was the perfect opportunity for me. And I stayed home for like two months and I was going crazy. Like kudos to all of you moms that do this every single day. Like right now that we're in quarantine is a struggle. You guys are amazing and you're my heroes and I admire you a lot. So uh, my husband would see me sad and crying and what am I doing with my life and I'm not doing anything. So he's like, you know what? You would be an excellent realtor because you already do like all the things a realtor does. Um, and I was like, no, that's not for me. I just felt like everybody and their dog was a realtor. Uh, right before you know the housing crash of 2008 so i was like oh, i don't know so he's just like here take the classes he paid for them he enrolled me and i'm like okay i'll just i'm just gonna do it but being who i am you know if i do something i want to do it really good and i want to give it my all i'm all in and um it was very difficult the first few years the first probably just the first year because it was during the recession and it was just hard to generate business business for me. Um, but once I got the ball rolling and I started to get the hang of it, uh, I really, really enjoyed it. So that's how I became a realtor. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, so take us through the journey of being, being a realtor, working for somebody and going, you know what? I want to own and be my own broker. So mm -hmm. tell me about the journey of that. So as the market started to stabilize and it, it was getting better, right? There was more and more realtors or more and more people getting the real estate license. But we see this like waves coming in and out where, uh, you know, 
they have these very high expectations. They think they're going to get their real estate license and boom, they're going to be driving a fancy car and taking all of these exotic vacations and just not working and just hanging out with their friends because that's the idea that they have. Uh, and the reality is that it is hard work and it's consistency and it's very easy to be successful, but because it is so easy to be successful, it's also very easy not to do the things that you need to do to become successful. So um, I was seeing these people coming into the industry, spending all of this money to get in because it's expensive and it takes time and energy also, right? Like the, the real estate exam is not easy and the classes are not easy and it is intimidating. And then they fail because nobody told them what to expect. And nobody really tell the, told them the reality of it. And nobody really coached them on how to be successful, how to get there. Um, so I wanted to do that. I wanted to uh, help people and empower them to, to know that if they believe they can be successful, they will be halfway there, but the other half that they need to do is the hard work. Uh, and we have a system and we have tools that will help those individuals become successful in this career. And that, that's, that was my drive. That's why I did it. That is awesome. I, I, I love that because it's, you're, you're passing on the knowledge, right? And it's like going, it's, it, it, was, it wasn't the magic answer of going, hey, I'm going to become a real, a real estate agent and all of a sudden they're thrown in and people are drowning now because it's just so much work and so much knowledge that, or lack of knowledge. But that is awesome that you're able to share that knowledge and direct people and say, hey, this is how you become successful in this industry. That is awesome. Fantastic. So uh, with that, um, and you kind of alluded to, at least as far as, uh, as, as far as from what I'm hearing, but what sets you apart, right? Because and, and you kind of said it, there were so many real estate agents, there's so many real estate brokers. What sets you apart uh, from everybody else? So in our company at the real estate firm, we really have the customers. The customer is our priority. And um, you have no idea how many times I have just yesterday, I went to show this house and it's just not the right house for my buyer, right? But she, people just get cut up on the uh, possibility and the dream and they don't see the reality of how much money is it really going to cost to fix that house and live in that house and uh, all of those things. So I just, you know, of course I want to sell. That's how I pay my bills. But I told her, you know what? Yes, we'll write up an offer. But first, let's do our due diligence. First, I want you to um, write it down. Uh, do a budget and see if this is something that you really want to do. Uh, I remember another time that I went to a listing appointment of a super nice house, very expensive house. The, what, the, the seller had just recently lost her husband, a husband who was a breadwinner, and she was just so devastated, and all she wanted was to move on, sell the house, buy something smaller, and leave behind her memories because it was painful and she was grieving, right? It, it would have been so easy, like she was ready to sell and she didn't care, right? And I had the listing agreement there and I told her, let's, let's do a deal, let's make a deal. I'm not gonna list your house because I don't think it's the right move for you right now. Let's wait six months. You have to promise me that you're not going to list your home with anybody else. Just give yourself those six months and then we'll sit down and talk about it. Uh, long story short, I never sold her a house. I never helped her buy another home. She was never my customer, but she refers a lot of people to me because she really didn't want to let go of that house. It was like the perfect living situation for her at the time. Uh, it would have been a really bad decision for her to sell her house. She was going to be losing money on it. So she was forever grateful that I was so honest and I told her no, when I could have made so much money off of that, 
just by not being honest, you know? So I think that's, I think, I want to think that a lot of brokers and a lot of, a lot of real estate brokers do the same thing. Um, but that's our core value. We want what's best for our customers because we don't want just to sell you a house and move on to the next one. We want you to trust us and we want to be your trusted real estate professionals. And you, we want you guys to come to us and ask us questions and, and have that rapport and that trust. That is awesome. So, so I don't talk a lot, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. This is good. I, we, I welcome that, right? This is good content. The listeners will, will grow from this. Um, and so, you, you know, one of the things I've always noticed, especially here in Las Cruces, was going, you're always, we're always having to build relationships, right? And that, that's kind of the way I just saw that situation where you're, you're building those, those, uh, those relationships. Oh, my little ones just got back. Hello, guys. Um, so we're building those relationships where, you know, and with those relationships comes trust. And, you know, and I, I just remember um, a gentleman here in town that used to tell us all the time was um, people don't like being sold, but they like to buy. Right. And so they're going to buy from French friends or, you know, and you're going to develop those friendships through relationships. And that's exactly what I see there is like, you know, you develop such a great relationship with her and yeah, she didn't buy and nor did she sell, but you, with that relationship, the way it was cultivated was you just gained so many more clients from, from her. And just that, again, just, just that friendship that you were able to, to gain from that and the trust that is fantastic. So, Okay, so we have as many, the, all the years that, you, that you've been uh, from, from your experience with the real estate business, going in and becoming your broker and going in and setting, setting what, what your business sets, sets you apart. But um, one of the things I always look at is um, every business kind of has a misconception. So what's the one thing that like people have, a, that they misunderstand about uh, being a real estate agent? Uh, we don't make as much money as you guys think. That's, I think that would be the number one. And it is just a lot of paperwork and it's a lot of liability. And let me tell you, this is not for everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, well, you know, and full disclosure to, you know, people that, that, are, that are watching this, you were my real estate agent. I, and I remember it took us, you know, Heather and I were, were, were pretty picky about, you know, the place we were looking for. Um, and what we wanted and, you know, and, and the school districts and stuff like that. We were probably when we, we were a big pain, but I also, I, I just seen like the negotiation process going back and forth and the, just the amount of contracts that we're going through, uh, you know, my, my sales experience came from cars, right? And it's like, okay, we agree upon the price, go talk to finance, but seeing everything that you had to take on and just again, the negotiation, the prices, the, the writing the contracts, rewriting the contracts. The first house that we found that didn't work out correctly, right? And so things like that. So yeah, I, I, I can see that, that the misconception is going, oh, it's easy, it's, it's, it's sold and not really, you guys, you guys, your hands are in the nitty gritty. And I think as, as sellers and buyers, we don't ever get to see that, right? The, 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 just that amount of paperwork and the work that goes through um, yes. coming to an agreement. I and also, Carlos, you guys don't even get to see the difficult part. Like, oh my gosh, we go through this roller coaster ride of, okay, this is going so good. And in the, in the middle of it, the lender calls, oh my gosh, they don't qualify anymore. What do you mean? What if we do this? What about that? So your deal dies and we save it. And you don't even know because we don't want to pass on that stress onto you, right? You're already stressing about the move and the kids and, and just the transition. And we want you to stress about those things, let us handle the rest. Uh, but no, you guys were not a big pain, but it is a lot of work. And um, I liked that you guys knew what you wanted. Uh, it's more difficult when we have buyers that like everything, because then they don't really know what they want and they don't even know what they need. They just like, you know, they don't know. So you have to kind of help them figure that out. Um, and, and that's even more challenging. But uh, we looked at a lot of homes, right? We did. We did. Um, and that's another thing when never a person is uh, looking for a realtor, 
find somebody that has the patience to show you the, the homes that you need to be to see so you can find the one because as soon as you guys walked into that one it was like yeah like we have a good feeling about this one this one might be the one and that's what we want um and i understand everything about finding the right one because that's how i am even whenever i go shopping for a dress i don't just settle for any dress i have to go and my husband tells me that I count all of the dresses at the store before I decide on one and then I take it home and I sleep on it and then maybe I'll return it the next day, you know? But that's just like how it is. So I'm very patient. Yeah, no, no, definitely. And I'm, I'm yeah, and you know, and I drive Heather crazy because I walk in and go, this is the size I need. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're jeans, I'll just wear them. <laughs> awesome. Okay, oh, so. I'm sorry, going back to what you were saying about all the negotiation, right? Um, so we deal with a lot of different personalities and in every negotiation. So we have to be dealing with the buyers and then sellers and then appraisers. And then we have home inspectors and uh, we have lenders and we have the title company. And then we have the uh, surveyors and we have so many other server, service providers. And um, everything in the whole transaction, every day you're negotiating something. So a lot of times we let our egos come in the way and deals just kind of go south because we want to be right and we want to win. And I don't think that's a good negotiation strategy. Um, when I first started working, um, I had just a little cubicle and I hated it because of my accent, I don't like to be on the phone when other people are listening to me. And uh, this other lady, well, it was there were six cubicles, so they would all listen to all of the conversations. And I was talking to somebody, and I was in the middle of a negotiation, and then I hang up, and this other realtor tells me, I don't understand how, how other people can take you serious with that squeaky voice. And then I turn around, I told her, I bet you anything I can get more out of somebody with this squeaky voice than with a bad attitude, right? Yes, yes, so definitely. That that's a thing about negotiation. Nice. Yeah, well, you know, and and you're and you're correct. It's like, right, it's the attitude of like, you know, when you have the winning attitude, when you're when you're focusing on it, when you are, you, you know, you have that positive attitude and yeah, I, and again, all my sales experience all came from the car business, but I, I just I just remember it was like they would warn you, distance yourself from, away from any of the negative salespeople, right? And just you, and if you, if you have to hang out with them, honestly, you shouldn't be hanging out with any of them. You should be looking at the lot, but if you are, hang out with the ones that have the positive outlook because they're the ones that are going to, you know, they're going to help grow you. you they're, they're sharing that knowledge. And, but you're also going to, you know, that sale is going to come through, but you're still going to have that all. Again, you can you can approach somebody with that negative a attitude, and you're going to put them off, and then you're going to walk back, and you're going to bring yourself down even more. Or you can approach them with that positive attitude, and whether or not they buy or not, you're still producing that energy and getting them excited about the prospect of of, of buying whatever it is that they're going to be buying, whether it's cards, whether it's houses, any of that. Yes, yeah. especially uh, that one. My biggest satisfaction is first time home buyers, those uh, people that they do not believe they could own a home. I like to help those people. I like to just empower them and tell them, yes, you can. Let's make a plan. I work with people for like three or four years until they have uh, succeeded on ho the home ownership uh, pathway. I like to do that. I like that challenge. I like to be able to help them change their mindset and tell them, yes, you can. Let, let's make it work. Awesome. And I think you're kind of alluding, alluding to it to my next question is like, so with this, what, what motivates you in your business? It, it's that. It's just being able to help. Well, now I'm still selling real estate, right? But I want to be able to mentor realtors on how to go about doing it and how to build up a successful real estate career. 
So that's my biggest motivator. Awesome. Um, and then so, so we have your motivation in business. What's your motivation in life? Wow. It, it is definitely my kids. And I know that sounds so cliche, but I have a son and a daughter. And I just, I just want to be a good example to them. I want to live a life of honor so I can transmit that to them. Um, and it's not always easy, right? Because we fail and we make mistakes, um, but we can also try through those hard and difficult times. We can learn from it and we can pick ourselves up and hopefully those around us will use that as an example in their lives too. That is also, you know, it's, and I, I don't find that a uh, cliche at all. I mean, I, every, a, a lot of businesses that we talk to, like that's their motivation in life is, you know, they have this, this family and you, and you want to be able to, to build a legacy that your family will be able to just, you know, see for generations to come and the legacy that you're building in your kids, you know, hopefully that they'll, they'll build into their grandkids and so on. And that's, that's awesome. And, and, and by no means cliche. No, no, that's, they're, they're, that's always the greatest focus in in, uh, in, in in people's personal life. So, okay. So while we are in isolation, right, and we are we're we're, we're unable to interact with people, right, and we have some downtime. Although you're, it sounds like you've been keeping busy, but are you taking this opportunity and time to be learning something new? I'm learning a lot about myself. Uh, I've always been a person that is on the go, 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 go. It's like kind of like an addiction. And I'm not saying that in a positive way at all. Like I like to be busy and I like to keep busy. And if I'm at home, I'm baking, I'm cooking, I'm doing things and I'm so distracted. And I think that I lost sight of the things that really matters. Um, I, I always knew my priority are my kids but I have to get all of these other things done, you know, before I get to spend time to them, with them. And um, this time has helped me kind of just like take a deep breath and refocus on what is, to have that eternal perspective. You know, is this problem that I have right now going to be relevant in the next life, probably not, but my kids will. And, and their spiritual and emotional well-being uh, is something that is eternal and is something that is the most important. So it has helped me with that, but also it has helped. I, I just, even in the midst of all of this, I just feel so hopeful and I have regained a lot of faith uh, especially faith in the American economy. I love the way the community, the Las Cruces community, we are so united to help uh, these small businesses. I want to go and shop to uh, the, the local businesses that are able to function right now. And once this is over, we, we all have a sense of let's inject our economy and let's move forward. And that makes me just very happy and very hopeful. And I think that things, the normal will be different, but it's gonna be a better different, and like a better normal. We're, we're going to learn so much from this and we're going to better ourselves in so many ways, especially economically. That is awesome. So, and with that, um, right, and that, that's kind of why we're, we're, we're doing these podcasts, although you, you kind of are able to work a little bit, so um, if you could kind of just go ahead and kind of describe to me, like, how, how are people, right, they could still get a hold of you, whether they're selling a house or buying a house, but what, what's the process now, what does that look like for real estate, for the real estate industry, um, and so first off, let's, let's take me through the if I am going to sell a house, what's the process now for me to, to, to sell a house during, during the COVID-19 outbreak? Um, it's best if the house is vacant. Uh, 
but if it's not, we can still sell it, certainly show it. Uh, we want to just take people that are qualified. We want to take buyers to homes. We want to take buyers, not lookers, into homes, you know, because we all have to be safe. Um, the uh, market is still doing good. Houses are still selling. We have had a lot of challenges. We have had deals fall through the cracks because either they were taking money out of the retirement to, for the down payment or to purchase a home. And those things are, everything is so up in the air. We see interest rates going up and down, up and down. And like throughout the day even, uh, it changes constantly. And then also another big change was the FHA guidelines that changed. So now a lot of people that we had under contract no longer qualify for those homes. And we have to, again, be creative and try to like uh, find a way to help them qualify again for the home. Um, so the process, whenever we're showing homes, we're wearing gloves, we have our disinfectant wipes, we don't shake hands, we try to keep our distance. Uh, after we show a home, we are disinfecting everything the buyer uh, has touched, and then we leave the house and disinfect uh, the lockbox and things like that. So we're trying to uh, take precautions um, as best as we can because the show must go on. Yes, it must. Um, you know, and, that, and that's and that's kind of the, the awesome thing about this, right? Is that Yes, and, and just the endurance of, of, of business owners where you guys are, you know, continue to work even, even when this, even in these, even in these unsure times and, you know, where things are changing so quickly um, and just being able to adjust, adapt, but still be able to essentially make somebody's dreams come true, whether it's selling a house or buying a house, upgrading a house. Um, and that is just awesome. And, and thank you so much for that. Um, okay, so now not we're on to the not so serious questions right because I, I i'm a geek i'm a super, I, I love comic books so i'm going to ask you if you could have one superpower what would it be i think it would be to be able to change mindset including my own uh, we are one of the obstacles the main obstacle that we have to overcome is our own mindset and it's not easy and it takes training and it takes a lot of soul searching to like, how come I'm not, how come I don't think I'm capable of A, B, and C, you know? Uh, so that would be my, uh, the superpower that I would like to have, especially right now that I'm a, bro a qualifying broker and that I want to mentor realtors to live up to their full potential in business, in real estate, uh, it would be, just that one thing. I just want to be able to change people's mindset, my own first. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so now the typical Las Cruces question, red or green? Both. I don't like to settle. <laughs> <laughs> no. Give me Christmas. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay, so you're still selling houses. You're still, you're still taking on clients. Uh, you're looking for... Uh, potential new real estate agents to join your firm. Um, so with all of this, right, or if somebody's going to sell, you know, if they're going to sell um, and, you know, they're looking, they're looking for a real estate agent, how can they find you uh, during this time? Our contact information is public domain. Just type in either my name, Miriam Alcala, or the real estate firm. Uh, find us on Facebook. We're on every social media platform. Uh, we are even on TikTok now, Carlos. So just wait for that. We have very silly videos and we're trying uh, to learn how to use it. But I have a really good coach, my daughter, my 12 year old is helping me, so I'll be good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, million ways to find me. Awesome, awesome. And of course, I'll put your information down below with the comments and so. Miriam, thank you so much for joining me today. And you are amazing realtor and we just appreciate you and just what you're doing for the community. And thank you for running a small business in Las Cruces. And uh, thank you again and be safe. Thank you, you too. Bye bye, Carlos.